Hello, and welcome to Drystone Chambers podcast. In today's podcast, we'll be learning about forbidden knowledge. That's 101 things not everyone should know how to do. You're going to be learning how to stage a coup, how to break out of prison, how to break into a car, and how to count cards at a casino. Let's start the ball rolling with how to commit identity fraud. Are your bills mounting up? Are bailiffs and loan sharks constantly knocking on your door? Maybe you just want to run up debts on somebody else's credit cards. Although this method is not without its risks, it's the oldest system of identity change in existence. Simply wander around a large cemetery until you find the gravestone of a child who was born around the same time as you, but who died in infancy without a social security number, bank account or any other form of ID. Make sure the child is of the same gender and race as you, then assume the identity of dead infant. Use the information on the gravestone to obtain a coffee birth certificate, which you can then use to get other vital items of identification. State and local registrars are required by law to make birth and death records public, so you can easily access physical records at government offices. The danger of this method is that there's no guarantee that the grave you choose hasn't already been visited by someone else with the same idea, often a member of the criminal fraternity. This means that your new identity could ideally easily make you one of the FBI's 10 most wanted. You could also try the identity fraud phishing scam. This is where you send off thousands of emails at random saying that a major US bank has gone bankrupt. On the email, include a link to an official looking website that you've already set up. Your email advises that customers are starting to panic. So in response, clients are advised to access their accounts to check that they're still in credit. Your website will contain a Trojan virus that captures user details for accessing their account so that you can log into them and steal money from their account. Launder the money by making false employment offers promising a significant income in a very short time for allowing you to transfer a large sum into victims' accounts, which they then must transfer to offshore accounts that you've set up. There is another way of making ill-gotten gains, and that's in counterfeit money. You don't need anyone to point out the benefits of forging your own money, overworking in a soulless job for 40 years. Before the arrival of desktop publishing, counterfeiting used to be an expensive operation, but now anyone can buy a PC, scanner and a high-end inkjet laser printer and become a paper millionaire without leaving their bedroom. First, put a £50 note on your scanner and scan it at the highest resolution, at least 2400 dpi. The bill has several security features, some of which can be overcome with a scanner, the entire bill is imprinted with a hexagonal pattern of faint and fine lines as well as an intricate etched detail, all of which can be picked up in a high resolution scan. The hard parts are finding the correct paper and the printing process. If you use a high quality inkjet printer, the hexagons and intricate detailing will be preserved and will look convincing to the naked eye, even if they do not stand up to scrutiny under a magnifying glass. Ordinary paper is made out of wood pulp Counterfeit bills have been printed on ordinary paper not only feel thicker and easily tear, they can be easily detected using a counterfeit pen which uses iodine, which changes colour on contact with the cellulose in the paper. Real bills are printed on special rag paper that is made from cotton and linen fibres, which also contains minute red and blue silk threads. Obtain a copy of fine red and blue silks and mix them with a dilute non-water soluble adhesive, suspend them in water, and then spray the water evenly onto your rag paper. Press the sheets between Teflon rollers and allow to dry. Some parts of the bill are printed in sparkly, colour-shifting ink. Your printer won't be able to reproduce this, the plastic security strip, or the watermark. However, you could count, copy counterfeit of Rocky Sk- uh, Ricky Scott Nelson, who took real $1 and $5 bills, master serial numbers, treasury and federal reserve seals, and the words, this note is legal tender, he then bleached the bills and printed $50 and $100 notes detailing over the tops. Print the fronts of several test bills, altering the hue, colour balance, citru- saturation and contrast until you get the best colour and definition match. Repeat with the back of the bill. Print a double-sided bill and keep only those where the front and back are perfectly aligned. Spend small quantities of your fake cash in locations with low chances of detection, e.g. at nightclubs where the light is poor and staff may be too busy to check. For larger quantities, use them in drug transactions, sell them to foreign black marketeers or drug dealers to use in scams, convert them to large denomination chips in Las Vegas, or take them to currency exchanges in Mexico.